Good afternoon. Um, as we continue our afternoon program, up next we're going to unveil the secrets of the Crossfire 120 degree air optics. So please join me in welcoming Zhang Chang, founder of Ant Reality. Hi everyone, uh, I'm very happy to be here to, sh to unveil the secrets of Crossfire, uh, how we can make 120 degree field of view for AR, which is uh, impossible before our solutions. Okay, so uh, we believe, um, since very early, we believe that wide field of view for AR is a must, but it's difficult. Uh, why? Uh, there's a lot of AR devices in the market, uh, but most of them uh, has a very narrow field of view. Uh, there are bird bath solutions, but there's a uh, but there is a small limit of the bird bath solutions for the field of view because it's geometry configuration. Uh, the view aperture could not be very big and the view distance could not be very small. So the final output of the vertical field of view will be limited under 30 degree field of view. The final output, even if we make that into 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it will still be like under 60 degree field of view. That is okay for watch a movie, but it's not supportive to immersive gaming experiments. How about freeform? Yeah, some of the uh, freeform solutions could reach wider field of view. Some of, some of them even can reach uh, close to 100 degree field of view. Uh, but, you know, it's all based on off-x imaging solution. So this kind of a field of view output from these solutions will be distorted like this. Uh, the edge of the image field will be not good enough. Uh, some, of, some of them are very poor. So the MTF is also very low. In this way, uh, we cannot utilize all parts of the field of view uh, if we want to remain very sharpness, uh, the sharpness of the images. So at the same time also, uh, if we want to remain a very uh, slim compact, uh, it's still not possible to reach a very wide field of view. So in this way, for free form, the best number we can get if we want to remain in a glasses form factor will be like only 50 degree field of view for free form. And uh, there are a lot of high-end AR glasses are using waveguide. Uh, some of them are geometrical, and some of them are diffractional. Uh, both of the kind of waveguide uh, has low limit of the view aperture because the pupil expansion could be very big. Also, the view distance is also could be very short because the thickness of the structure. So there's not much limit of the field of view. In the light, light guide part, the only limit of the field of view will be limited by the light engine. So I'll give you an example that if we want to get 70 degree field of view, uh, the number of the engine volume will be close to 3.4 cc. That is not a very small volume. So it's not very easy to design this into a glasses-like form factor. That, uh, so that is also why we have a lot of uh, uh, diffractional waveguide glasses will not be a glasses, just uh, like a strip a headset, yeah. Uh, it's a quite big challenge for us, for the, uh, uh, for the industrial participator to bring down the volume of the light engine while remaining in the same field of view. All, it always causes a smaller field of view if we want to remain it, uh, in a glasses like form factors. So let's introduce our idea. We design a brand new, new concept of the total reflection-based uh, waveguide system, we call the mixed waveguide. We use the same structure of this light guide. Uh, the light will go directly from the panel to into the prism, and several light, several times of uh, fold pass and go out, then into another imaging display, imaging lenses, then go back to your eyes. So the image lenses, which is just the view aperture. Uh, will be not very small, and uh, the view distance, uh, because 
the thickness of the lens is also very short, um, so it will be not very big. Uh, so the final output of the field view will be uh, around 90 degree field view diagonal. That is a much, much bigger than any other existing uh, systems uh, for AR. And there will be an uh, air gap for TIR, uh, total inner reflection. That's why we also call this uh, a new kind of waveguide. And also, there's no projectional structure beside the panel. So we can call this engine-free, which means we can design this into a very frameless glasses form factor. And after we analyze the light path, we will figure out that this is a totally unaccess imaging system. In this way, we can remain very high image quality uh, for, this, for this kind of uh, field of view. Let's take a look at how sharp was the image and how wide was the field of view. Yeah, so you can even use that for entertainment, for gaming, not even just uh, uh, watch a movie. into this uh, kind of glasses-like form factor. So how to make bigger field of view? We always are pursuing bigger and bigger. We design, uh, we design the one light source based uh, uh, configuration we call type A and type B. Uh, but we design also type C, which are using two sets of the same structures. One is upside down and one is downside up together to bring this type C configuration. In this way, we can reach wider field of view, uh, especially in the vertical dimension, so that we can reach 135 degree field of view for this kind of new figuration. Uh, it's also engine free by these two panel, and it's also uh, unaccessed imaging solutions for this kind of new figuration. And we will figure out that uh, the the image of the upper part and the lower part will be naturally matched uh, in the air in front of you. And while we just do the undistortion like any other VR solutions, because the field of view is very big, so we need the same story about the undistortion al algorithms, then we will get a standard 100 to 135 degree field of view, which is just like the same level with any other VR devices which is very important for us to reach this huge level that we can make this into a VR mode if we need. We also designed this a straight free system based on polarization system. So in this way, with this special design, we can cut most part of the ghost Im images, which is the big concern of this kind of uh, polarization based system. And also, the eye glow is still not very friendly for uh, daily wearing glasses. But remaining a very high efficiency of the, from the panel to your eye. So in this way, we will be very happy to announce that we already know how to achieve wide field view AR. Yeah, but if we remember that this is not the first time we get wide field view AR, uh, the last time you try maybe with uh, Meta Quest Pro and maybe this right this uh, morning uh, Meta or uh, also announced uh, Quest 3. Also, you know maybe uh, one in one week we will have another big news from uh, uh, Apple, uh, and we read from some news that they may also do this, do this uh, same stuff, which is pancake together with the video see through system to make you. Uh, wide field view AR experiments. Uh, but I'm going to tell you that uh, video see-through system is not good at all. We believe that optical see-through is the only way for us to achieve ultimate AR. OK, so this is the artwork by Richard Oliver. He's an ar artist uh, who is very good at to, uh, to draw a landscape uh, painting and merge it into a real environment. Uh, but I'm going to say that this is very cool stuff of artwork, but the, it's still very easy to tell the difference, which part is the real and which part is the painting. It's the same story about video see-through system. The display systems cannot reach the same level of the real-world brightness, also the resolution, 
for the real world is, it, is uh, according to your retinal resolution, which will be like 24K per eye, but you know, the best number we can have is 4K per eye. Also, the real world has no latency, and uh, the, 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 the focal field is infinity, but you know, uh, the display system has uh, one fixed or even an adjustable focal plane. That is not uh, OK for us to wear it all day long. It will cause VAC problem. Also, it will cause dizziness. So VAC is no go for VR. It's just for the early adapter. It's just for a small taste of AR. It's not real ultimate AR. So I'm going to give you uh, our uh, comparison between our Crossfire solutions with Pancake solutions. Uh, for if we are all targeting ARVR hybrid use case. Pancake are using video see-through, so it's not perfect. Uh, Crossfire are using native optical see-through systems with uh, 10 to 30 millimeters in thickness, so it's even slimmer than Pancake solutions, which is good. The big concern of Pancake solutions is the ghost images. Uh, the best Pancake solutions to get, uh, right now in the market are still have around 1% of the ghost images. But with our crossfire, we only have 0.1% of the ghost images because our solutions are based on totally linear polarization imaging system. So the breakthrough of this kind of system is very low. Not like you know, pancake solutions are based on circular polarization. So the breakthrough is much higher than crossfire. And the people might say that, OK, Crucify is good. But you know Crucify use two panels than one panel from Pancake. So you might be much more expensive than Pancake. But I will give you the answer is that we can even cheaper than Pancake. Because for Pancake solutions, uh, some people might use, uh, uh, some solution might use 1.4 inches uh, micro OLED for the optical system. But that is very expensive because the huge is so big. So that might cost $300 per piece. If we switch to Crossfire, we could only uh, just use two pieces of 0 0.9 inches micro OLED, which is, very, uh, which is only $140 per piece. Two pieces together will be cost only $280. And the cost of optics module will be at the same level between the, the Pancake and the Crossfire solution. So the final cost uh, even cheaper. Crossfire is even cheaper than Pancake, which is very important for us to stay in the uh, consumer level market. This is the uh, newest module we are uh, announcing at this AWE show. It is uh, rather in, uh, at our booth. Uh, it's the biggest number of the resolution we can get in the whole industry right now. And it's also uh, been made into a very hybrid because it's, uh, the field of view is big enough. So how to make it hybrid? Uh, because we are just a see-through system. So if we just close up the environment light, uh, then it will be just like a VR system. So we have two ways to cut the real-world light. The first is we call the liquid crystal-based visor. Let's take a look. This is. How does it look like with our Max 3K module? Let's look, let's look how sharp was the image and how brightness of the uh, contrast. Also, let's take a look about. Uh, you can see there the, back, uh, the background is keep flashing on and off. That is uh, the results of the light uh, visor working. The liquid crystal visor is working. So this is uh, one way to make it into an ARVR hybrid. So in this way, we already checked how to achieve wide field view optical see-through AR with our solutions. Uh, this is the uh, first time uh, for the whole industry to achieve this goal in a glasses form factors. But you know, um, some people might still ask me, uh, the same questions. Why only you can make this happen? Why only end reality can make this happen? Why only mixed waveguide? There's a lot of uh, existing AR optics in, in, in the market. Uh, 
If these two systems working together, two images merging perfectly together, work, if this idea work, why other solutions can not use the same concept? I'm going to tell you that if they want to make use of this two systems concept, uh, they must solve this problem, which we call the eye shift emerging problem. In this way, for example, if some freeform solution designer design a system like this, uh, it will be all offset, off axis display systems. Comparing our solutions, it's all on axis solutions. So the final output of the image will be like this. For Crossfire, it will be naturally merged perfectly, and for Freeform, it will be offset like this, distorted like this. Although we could do the undistortion algorithms to bring the image back correctly like this, but the problem will arise again while the eye is moving. So we call eye shifting. So let's take a look. While your eye is moving, the pixel is keep moving offset. Uh, from the upper part and the lower part, the pixel cannot be at the same time all the time. So it's very difficult to merge the image perfectly. Although we could use some eye tracking solutions to do the real time uh, correction about the images, but that is still only ways for us to solve the X and Y dimension of the images. We cannot solve the Z dimensions, which is just the deep focus. Uh, if we remember that the deep focus, the deep focus of the freeform systems still not matched perfectly. So in this way, for freeform systems, we guess that that will be not no go for these systems can work perfectly into this view system way. But for our course file systems, let's take a look again. It's just like the same way what we get from the pancake and the first nail wide field view system. It's so very easy for us to do the undistortion and do the uh, to make the image right. So this is why we got the free phone is no go. So if any other uh, existing optical solutions want to join this new club, which is dual system club, we already have the answer that free phone is no go because the merging problem. We also have the answer about the bird bath. If we design bird bath into this way, uh, the result is uh, 80 degree field view is not bad, but you know the thickness is will be up to 25 uh, millimeters. That is a huge uh, weight for, for you know, uh, glasses-like. So it's, it's still no go. How about waveguide? Waveguide is OK with uh, uh, these two sets together. But the price will always double, which is the bad news, because it's already very expensive for the existing waveguide solutions. But for our cross file solutions, we are all on access solutions, so there's no merging problem. And we are bigger than 100 degree field of view in 10 to 30 millimeters thickness, so it's friendly for us to design a very slim form factor of the glasses. And the most important is that it's even cheaper than one panel based solutions like Pancake. So it's very close, it's just right inside the retail consumer market. So that is the answer we have for why only anti reality mixed wave guide crossfire can solve this problem, why others cannot. So we also announcing crossfire reference design at this show, uh, which is the standalone glasses, 100 degree field of view, 10 millimeters in thickness. All the number is quite perfect. Um, also, together we bring the second type of dimming solutions which we call mechanical dimming. It will give us wider range of the dimming situations. Let's take a look how it works. This is the VR mode. Let's take see how dark is it and how bright was the AR mode. Which we can just switch back and forth with a very wide range. Let's take a look what's the AR see-through. So the best see-through number is 33, which is very bar which is very bright and the dark situation is 0.002. It's just dark VR. In this way, we can say in the future, if some solution, if some product uh, are integrating crossfire into the final product, it will be definitely better than any other AR glasses, AR VR hybrid used 
solutions in the world. For example, HoloLens is, has a fixed uh, see-through. Also, the, the field of view is not enough, so it's not for AVR hybrid. Metrolib 2 has a dimming solution, which is very cool. But the 0 0.3 see-through is not dark enough. It's not for AR. It, it could be not used for VR, because you can still see the real environment. The 70 degree field of view is still not enough for a VR support. MetaQuest Pro and uh, the MetaQuest 3 and maybe uh, the Apple devices are just for the video, uh, the, the AR VR hybrid use case, but with video see through system. But the video see through system is not perfect. Crossfire is perfect with its wide range of the dimming system. The dark mode is just VR. You can barely see the real world. Uh, even there is some uh, very strong light sources. And the well is in the AR mode, which is 33 degree, which is 33%. You can even read a book in a lights of daytime room. So that is bright enough. For the field of view, we are big enough also. So it's uh, very supportive to a VR AR hybrid use case for cross-fire solutions. The last but the most important, also the price point. We are not targeting, you know, a couple of thousand US dollars. The product with our solutions will be just from 500 to 800 dollars. It's just the retail price. It's very attractive uh, and a competitive price point according to Pancake Solutions and any other solutions who are targeting an AI hybrid use case. This is the whole family of our mix we've got solutions. It is all showed at our booth. We got a type A is 85 degree field of view for gaming. Type B is uh, 56 degree field of view, which is good for a daily wearing because the thickness of the lens is, is very thin. It's six millimeters. It's very thin, just like your regular prescription glasses. And we also have type C and type C max, which have a big enough field of view also we make them into a very hybrid use case. So with our mixed wave guide solutions, we are not only have wide field view, we have engine-free design together with very thin lenses. So it's very friendly for us to have a glasses form factor. We have perfect see-through. There's no ghostly images. And there's no diffractional effect. Also, there's uh, no you know, rainbow effect. The MTF image quality is very high with our on access display system. And the price point is very attractive just for the consumer level. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you the truth is that a lot more and more clients are, are getting interested in, in our solutions. For example, some bird bath adapter company uh, are switching to our type A and type B solutions as their future product to be uh, daily wa wearing glasses or for movie watching and for our type and for our type C's, uh, so you will use it like your smartphone and the tablet and also for our crossfire and the crossfire max uh, we will have the chance to work in with some company who is using pancake and the video through systems now for the next generation product we'll be using our crossfire and Crossfire Max, uh, we might have the chance to make this into next generation product and make that into, uh, you, you will use it just like your laptop for your you know, productivity work or use it for a gaming system like your uh, PC console. So I must say we already have the chance to get into the gate of the future metaverse with this whole family of the new technologies. Uh, so we also very happy to announce that the lenses of our mixed wave guide is already under mass production. We 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 worked with Gore-Tec, which is a big manufacturer in the industries, and we are welcoming more clients working together to integrating the lenses of mixed wave guide into their future production. Last year we attended AWE. Uh, Carl Goodall gave us a review, and this year CES we have a, another great show. Uh, we got a more review from the industry, um, Charlie Fink and uh, Ben Long and any others. Uh, we got a, 
a showcase in Booth 113. Go check out Booth. We got four demos for you. Uh, you will enjoy the whole family of Mixed Wave Guide. And uh, come to check out Booth. I will be there for you. And uh, welcome to join the new world of wide field view AR. Thank you.